Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Art Whisper 88. This is a little nifty squeeze bottle that I got from Amazon. And I think these will make a good device for making marks. Now it's difficult to uh, squirt on the plate with this so I thought I would use this squirt bottle instead and I'm going to put a good amount of Blick Acrylic Mars Black and since it's very thick because it has quite a bit of extenders in it I'm going to water it down I shouldn't be doing this on the plate, but it's okay. So what I'm doing is creating a very ink-like solution. Let me just mop this up. It is really on there. I guess you get what you pay for. Okay. So now instead of using a marker or a Sharpie, I will use this squirt bottle. I think it's a more consistent line and it's a darker black. So I'm going to do it's kind of tricky because the surface of the plate is very bouncy so it's a different kind of uh, effect here okay So I will air dry this first before applying a second layer. I got a little impatient because I put too much paint. So what I did is I tried to soak it up with this gift wrap tissue just to soak up the excess and I think it creates uh, an interesting image now I'm not going to wait for this to dry completely because the little smears are going to add some texture at least that's what I'm hoping so I will use some lighter colors Up 
here some yellow ochre. And some cadmium red light. And some unleached titanium. So I'm hoping to achieve a complex image with the first pool. Now since this is very busy, I'm not going to do any scribbles. This is Blick watercolor paper, 15 by 22. And since I'm trying to pick up two layers, I'm going to leave this on for five minutes. In the meantime, while I'm waiting for that paper to dry, I'm going to have some fun with my squirt bottle. Since the liquid has been watered down, I'm not really squeezing on the bottle. If I squeeze too hard, it's going to make a big mess.
just going to make a variety of different kinds of marks. And I find this squeeze bottle is very responsive. It's more effective than a brush or a magic marker. And the, uh, the marks I make are very different with a squeeze bottle. In a way, this is a very good warm-up exercise because it kind of loosens you up. It's just a little messy, so I have to use a uh, cardboard backing. And I have this um, foldable laundry dryer, uh, the kind that you put in the bathtub to hang underwear and socks. Um, I have it off camera because I don't have enough room to show it, but um, I'm going to take this and dry it on that rack. There's something very liberating about doing this. And there's something to be said about getting your hands dirty. Okay, let's see what happened to the, uh, before I get too distracted. Let's see what happened to this print. I think it picked up everything. Very cool. Check this out. It's got that very post postmodern or mid-century modern look, which I'm aiming for, because that's my favorite period in art history. Actually, I'm gonna show you the close-up. I think it's very cool. And sometimes when you're impatient, the rewards are unexpected.
Okay. So I will try to work on a second one. Let this dry for a few minutes. Not completely dry, but dry enough. Okay, this time I will use an iridescent white. On one side. some cadmium orange on the other side. I made sure I washed my hands before doing this. I really prefer using my hand to a baron or a spoon. You can use a wooden spoon if you want, or a baron, which is the traditional means of making an impression, especially with a woodcut or lino cut. But I, I prefer to use my hand because I, I like to feel the paper. I like the feel of the paper. And I can modulate the uh, pressure that I'm putting on the plate. Okay, I will leave that for five minutes and I'll be right back. Okay, let's see what we have here. Very cool. It's more orange than iridescent white, but the, the iridescent white is really stunning. Like a pearl, like a pearly finish. Very cool. I like that. Okay, so far so good. 
Now let me try a third attempt with uh, maybe some green as a contrast or blue. really going very very easy because it's uh, very easy to put too much paint Okay, this is dried a little bit. This is one of my favorite colors. This is green gold. And this is manganese blue. Now I notice these paints are not the uh, consistency is not always the same. Some are thicker than others. So I kind of have to guide it with my finger. It won't drop out of the tube by itself. Here's some iridescent white just as an accent. And as you can see, I'm not really that fastidious about keeping my brayers clean. But these um, leftover paints really give a wonderful texture. Now again, I will leave this for five minutes because I want the black first layer to transfer. And this watercolor paper has a good thickness. It's pretty sturdy and that's what I like about it. It has this, the capacity to absorb the pigment.
Okay, let's see what we got. Very cool. Well, this really has a it really has a printed effect on it. I can imagine these images as giant canvases. I think they'd be really cool. So let me air dry all of these and then I'll decide what the next step will be. So don't go away. Okay, back from a short break. These have dried very nicely. They have a very nice satin finish, which I like. So I have some tissue paper scraps here, which I think will be very effective. Now this is the archival tissue paper. Now the reason why I bought this tissue paper is not so much to use it in collage, it's since it's archival, it's acid free. So it lasts a very long time. I use it to wrap my artwork when I sell it. Or I use the tissue paper as interleaving. In other words, when you store your artwork, it's always good to have a layer of tissue paper or wax paper in between to keep it safe from getting scratched or getting dirty. That's the reason why I bought the archival tissue. And when you buy archival tissue, you can't just buy one sheet. You have to buy a, a box. I think the box was like something like a hundred sheets. So, uh, that's the story behind my archival tissue. I'm not sorry that I bought it. Um, it uh, is going to come in very handy.
Okay, that does it for the first piece. I'm gonna try this one. It's an interesting name. It's called Blue Lagoon. It's good to have a wet rag handy because this can get messy. Okay, that is collage number two. I didn't used to tear my collage paper, but I think it does give a very interesting effect.
Okay, that's it for the third piece. So I will air dry all of these and then recap. Okay, everybody, this has dried very nicely. Let me show you a close-up. It's a combination of the tissue paper collage and the gestures with the squirt bottle. I really like the effect of the squirt bottle. It's more dynamic than either a brush or a marker. It's like a double line and the detail is razor sharp as you can see here. Okay, that's the first first piece. And here's the second one. I love the iridescent shine on this one. And here's the last one. I hope you like this video. This was a lot of fun to do because I had no real idea of what the outcome was going to be. And that's the fun of printmaking. And I hope you discover this uh, fun as well. So thank you for watching, for subscribing. Please hit the subscribe button if you haven't already. and do check out my new website artwhisper88.com now all of these pieces are for sale and the proceeds go to help support this channel so thank you so much again and i hope to see you next time